In this lecture and the one following, we're going to talk about something called stoichiometry, which is kind of a mouthful of a word. Really, it's talking about predicting the amount of reactants or products that will be made or consumed in any reaction uh, if we have information about one other component of the reaction. And so it's a very powerful predictive tool. In fact, I think this is one of the things I used the most from introductory chemistry when I was actually doing lab work regularly. Uh, so these are calculations you will see throughout your chemistry uh, career, um, like every single lab and every week. So we'll do, we'll do a detailed job on it. And hopefully you've seen this or had some exposure to it before. Uh, but the, the foundation of stoichiometry calculations are that one, they're basically dimensional analysis problems. They're like three-step conversion problems. And they really hinge on the idea that you can convert between the amount of one chemical in a reaction and the amount of another chemical in a reaction using mole ratios. That I could say, if I, I know the amount of moles of B I have, I can figure out the amount of moles of C I will produce. Because remember, moles are just telling us the number of molecules or atoms that we have in a mixture. And our reactions are really based on those molecules colliding. And so the number of molecules around, if they all collide and collide and collide enough to form products, should predict the amount of products we have. So we've got two versions of mole to mole ratios that you'll see in chemistry. One is the mole to mole ratio that's within a molecule. And this is the mole ratio that is encompassed in the subscripts of a molecule. So that tells us how many atoms of A are, and how many atoms of B make up one molecule, or how many moles of A and moles of B make up a mole of that molecule. And so I can determine how much I have of A or B if I know one or the other, and I know that ratio. Now the other kind of mole ratio exists in chemical equations, and that is the coefficients that are added in front of each of the chemical formulas for our reactants and products. So these tell us the ratio of moles that will uh, react together or be produced within the reaction. So if I know I have one mole of A, or A moles of A, then I can predict the number of moles of C that I'll produce for that chemical out of this reaction. And that's primarily in stoichiometry problems. This is the way that we'll use it the most. So let's look at this in more detail. So here's octane reacting with oxygen in a combustion reaction to produce carbon dioxide and water. And uh, for this one, we're gonna ask ourselves how many moles of oxygen are going to react if we have 0.044 moles of octane. Now, from my chemical equation, I can create conversion factors uh, that'll help me in this calculation. Otherwise, it really feels like a blank page. Like I have one piece of information and a chemical formula, and that is it. But really, that's all the information I need because there's so much hidden information in a chemical formula or in a chemical reaction. So from my chemical reaction, I can take those coefficients and build a big conversion factor. I know from my coefficients that I've got two octane, 25 oxygen will produce 16 carbon dioxide and 18 water. I can rewrite that as these equalities, that two moles of octane will equal 25 moles of oxygen, or it'll equal 16 moles of carbon dioxide or 18 moles of water. And I can use those equalities as conversion factors, as fractions, as I see fit. So to be able to convert to moles of oxygen, I'm gonna take my starting point, which is the only piece of given information that I really have here, which is this 0 0.044 moles of octane. And for these types of conversions, I strongly recommend writing the molecule after the word moles for your unit and think of it all as the unit. So for the 0.044, the unit is moles of octane because we're gonna be using just moles all over the place. And without a context of a molecule associated with it, it's gonna be really hard to make sure you're setting up your problem correctly. Now, I want to be able to convert into something that gives me moles of oxygen. So I need a conversion factor that puts moles of oxygen on the top of my fraction for my conversion factor and moles of octane on the bottom. And so that is gonna be this 
two moles of octane is equal to 25 moles of oxygen. That's my conversion factor. So I'll put that two moles of octane and my 25 moles of oxygen, those numeric values into the equation I've already set up. And now I know that my moles of octane are gonna cancel out and I'll be left with units of moles of oxygen. So this problem then really becomes 0.044 moles times 25 divided by two. Uh, and that's gonna give me 0 0.55 moles of oxygen. And that's how I do a mole to mole conversion. And the cool thing about this is I can convert that given 0.044 moles of octane into the amount of oxygen I need to react with it. I can convert it into the amount of carbon dioxide that will be produced or the amount of water that will be produced. So it's really powerful. And what we're doing here is we're taking, we're building a conversion factor from our chemical equation.